Hi learners now i am going to be talk about descriptive statistics and its types descriptive statistics are brief descriptive coefficients that summarize the given data sets which can be either a representation of entire or a sample of populations descriptive statistics are broken down into measures of standard tendencies and measures of variability measures of standard tendency include the mean median and mode while measures of variability include standard deviations variance the minimum and maximum variables and the kurtosis and the skewness descriptive statistics allows us to characterize our data based on its properties generally there are four major types of descriptive statistics the first one is measures of frequency it consists of count percent and frequency it shows how often something occurs and it is used this when we want to show how often a response is the second type is called measures of standard tendency it consists of mean median and mode it locates the distributions by various points and it uses this when we want to show how an average are most commonly indicated responses the third type is measures of dispersion or variations it consists of range variance and standard deviations it identifies the spread of scores by stating intervals it's used this when we want to show how spread out the data are it is helpful to know when our data are so spread out that it affects the mean the fourth type is measures of positions it consists of percentile rank and quartile ranks it describes how scores fall in relations to one another relies on standard scores and it's used this when we want when need to compare the scores to a normalized scores for example national norm normally in the descriptive types we typically interested in asking a four types of questions the questions are as follows the question number 1 what is the center of the data so for this we have to get the conclusions or get the findings as a result of measures of center tendency therefore i am highlighting and mean and median in this slides so the for finding the measures of center tendency we need to go the three important calculations like mean median mode first of all we must know what is measures of center tendency a measures of center tendency is a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central portions within that set of data as such measures of center tendency are sometimes called measures of center locations in this first i'm going to be emphasize what is mean the mean or average is the most popular and well known measures of center tendency it is called it can be used with the both discrete and continuous data too although it is used most often with the continuous data the mean is equal to the sum of all the values in the data sets divided by the number of values in the data sets so if you have the n values in a data sets and they have the values like x1 x2 and so on up to xn the sample mean usually denoted by x bar is x1 plus x2 plus x3 and to x and divided by n this is a formula for mean the formula is usually written slightly different manner using a greek capital letter sigma pronounced as sigma which is means sum of normally we use the term as a sum of as summary the formula for the mean finally i may conclude finally i may emphasize the formula for mean is x bar is equal to summation of x divided by n now i am moving to the median median denotes the most central values of the series of numbers the median is the midpoint of the distributions the same number of the scores is above the median is below it the median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order of magnitude 
the median is less affected by the outliers and skew data. The value which divided the values into two equal halves with the half of the values being lower than the median and half higher than the median. The median formula for the ungrouped data is nothing but n plus 1 divided by the tooth item. n is called as a number of items. If you want to find out the median the continuous data, we have to add up the difference formula. The formula is L plus n by 2 minus CFB divided by FW into I. So where L is equal to the exact lower limit of the median class, N represents the frequency, total number of frequency. CAB represents cumulative frequency which is below the median classes and FW in the formula is refers frequency within the median class, I refers size of the class interval. So therefore I am giving the, the small hint as say a middle value of the distribution as a median. Now I am moving to the mode. The mode is the most frequently acquiring score or most repeated value. The term mode has come from the French in which it means to be patient. As a statistical language, mode is the value that occurs more or most frequently in a statistical distributions. So therefore I emphasize the term mode is called most frequent value, value or most occurring values. The formula to find out the mode for the continuous data or in a uh, discrete data, we have to use the formula mode is equal to 3 times of median minus 2 times of mid. So this is the first question we are discussing. The first question is talking about the what is the center of the data. So for this, we must know the three important things of my self-centered mean, median and mode. The second question about the descriptive statistics is how spread out the data is the second question from the second question for the getting the answer for the second question we have to look on the methods of variability that's why i'm uh, using the term qd and dst is nothing but quartal deviation standard deviations before going to the one by one of the variability first i'm going to highlight what is message of variability as well as the message of dispersion variability refers to the extent to which the scores of the distribution differ from each other. An equivalent definition says that the variability refers to the extent to which the scores in a different in the distribution differ from the mean. If a distribution is lacking the variability, we may say that it is a homogeneous. Suppose if it comes an opposite, the data spread is called or the data it may be heterogeneous. The extent or degree to which the data tend to spread around the average is called the dispersions or a variations. Mess of dispersion help us studying the extent to which observation are scattered around the average or the center value. Normally, the methods of center tendency consist of the four important things. One is called range, average deviation, standard deviation, as well as the quartile deviations. We will discuss one by one. The first one I am going to be highlight what is range. Range is given by the highest score in the distributions minus the lowest score of the series. Range is the difference or the interval between the largest and smallest item. Symbolically it may written as a range is called the highest score minus lowest score. Now I am moving to the mean division. Sometimes we may call as an average division too. Average deviation is defined as the average distance of the scores from the mean of the distributions. It is also called as a mean distribution or MD. To find out the average deviations to account is taken of signs and all the deviation whether plus or minus are treated as a positive. Average deviation is one of the measures of dispersion dealing with all items. Mess of deviation is an average of the deviation from all the individuals of scores from their mean. For find out the calculation for average deviation for the ungrouped data, the formula is summation of modulus of small x divided by n, where small x is called the capital X minus m is nothing but the deviation of the raw score from the mean. n here refers number of scores. If you want to find out the average deviation for the continuous data or a group data as a group data, 
we have to use the different formula that is called mean division is called summation of modulus f into small x divided by capital N where small x is equal to capital X minus M is nothing but division of the rows goes from the mean. The third of the methods of variability I am going to highlight what is standard deviations. The standard deviation was first introduced by Carl Pearson. It provides a standard unit for measuring the distance of various goes from the mean. Standard deviation, the most stable index of variability is denoted usually by the letter sigma, the Greek letter alphabet. The standard deviation is defined as a positive square root of the arithmetic mean of the scores of the deviations of the observation from the arithmetic mean. The value of the SD is always a positive. Standard deviation is the square root of the mean of the scores of the deviation of individual items from the arithmetic mean. So here I may highlight the two important formulas of the standard deviation. The one formula for raw data, other formula for the uh, group data. For the raw data formula, SD is called root of summation small x square divided by n. Here the small x is nothing but capital X minus m. The same way if you want to find out the standard deviation for the group data, we have to adopt another formula that is called root of summation f into small x square divided by n. Now I am moving to the quartile deviations. Sometimes we may call as a interquartile range too. Interquartile range includes the distributions in other words interquartile range is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. Now when the interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1. Quartile deviations or QD can be defined as a half of the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. Hence, it's one half of the scale's distance between the 75th and 25th percentile in a frequency distribution. The formula for QD is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. If you want to find out the or computation of the quartile division from the group and group data or the raw data, we have to use the formula, the same formula we have to use. But for finding the Q3 and Q1, we have to use a different formula. If you want to find the value of the Q1 in the raw data, we have to use the formula n plus 1 divided by fourth item or fourth score. For finding the Q3 value, we have to use the formula 3 times of n plus 1 divided by fourth item or score. The same way, if you want to find out the uh, Q3 and Q1 value of the group data, we have to use the different formula. For finding the Q1, is equal to L1 plus N by 4 minus CFB divided by FW into I. If you want to find out the Q3 value, we have to use the different formula. Uh, it's nothing but L3 plus 3N by 4 minus CFB3 divided by FW3 into I. So if you use this formula, we may find out the value of Q3, Q1. Then finally, we may substitute the value into QD. We may get the QD value. Yes, so now we are discussing about the two important questions. Now I move to the third question about the descriptive statistics. The third question is talking about what are the extremes of the data. If you want to find out the extremes of the data, we have to find out the, these three things. One is called minimum, maximum and outliers. Maximum score and minimum score is nothing but the, the lower score of the data as well as the, the higher score of the data. Then outliers, some of the scores, only few of the scores may be uh, scattered uh, in a different places. Most of the scores be scattered around the average only, but only few of the course scores, if they, uh, if they lies on the different places, then we may call as the terms outliers. So I hope uh, we are discussing the three important questions about the discrete statistics. I hope you understand. Now I'm going to the, the last questions. What is the shape of the distribution? Is it symmetric or asymmetric? Based on this only we have to go for inference statistics. For if you find out the answer for this question only we have to adopt whether we can go with the parametric or non-parametric status. For finding the shape of the distributions, we have to think about the three important uh, shapes. One is called normal probability curve, skewness and kurtosis. For this question, I am going to emphasize the three important um, diagram based representation of the uh, important things I am going to talk about now. One is called normal probability curve. Normal probability curve is also called as a normal distributions. Normal distribution is the cornerstone of the modern statistics. 
which is highly useful in statistics and is need to deal with continuous probability distributions. The normal distribution was first discovered by De Maivis in 1733 to solve problems in games or chances. Later, it was applied in action and social science by the French mathematicians Laplace. This concept further developed by the Gauss. The literal meaning of the term normal is an average. Now, I'm going to emphasize some of the properties of the normal property curve. The first properties is talking about the bell-shaped curve. So the shape of the normal curve is like a bell shape. The second property mean equal to median equal to mode. It means that the value of the mean, median, mode are seen. Uh, it's nothing but the fall, the three values may fall at the same point on the curve. The third property is called as a unimodal or unimode. The curve starts and reaches the peak in one point and slows down. So the curve is having only one mode, it means. Then the fourth property is perfectly symmetric. The normal curve is perfectly symmetric in nature. That means the curve inclines towards both sides equally from the center of the curve. Thus we get equal halves on both sides from the center point. The fifth property is called not skewed. It means that the curve is not skewed. It means that the value of the measures of skewness is equal to zero. In this case of normal property curve, the skewness value is equal to zero. The next two property is called asymptotic. The normal curve does not touch on the base or the x-axis on the both sides. Thus, it extends from negative minus infinity to positive or plus infinity. The next property, we may ha highlight some of the various measures of the normal property curve. In the normal property curve, the quarter division value, it may be 0.6745 approximate value. The mean deviation value 0.7979 approximate. The skewness value we already discussed is exactly zero. The kurtosis value is equal to 0.263. These are the sum of the measures of the normal property curve. The next property distance of the curve. For practical purpose, the baseline of the curve is divided into six sigma distance from minus three sigma to plus three sigma. Most of the cases, that is 99.73 percentage is covered within the such distances, within the plus or minus three sigma region. The next important property, this is called 68, 95 and 99.7 rule. What it means? It means that the distance of the curve from minus three sigma to plus three sigma is, is equal to 99.73 percentage. The distance of the curve from the minus two sigma to plus two sigma is 95.44 percentage. The distance of the curve from minus 1 sigma to plus 1 sigma is 68.26 percentage. Therefore, we are using the rule as a 68, 95, 99.7 rule. The next property, maximum ordinate of the curve. The maximum of the, of the curve occurs at the mean where z1 equal to 0 and the value of the highest ordinate is 0. 3989. The highest of the ordinate at 1 sigma is 0 0.2420, the 2 sigma is 0 0.0540, and the 3 sigma value is 0 0.0044 respectively. The analysis of the scale value, the next property, the scale values are analyzed as Z1 is equal to X minus M divided by sigma, is nothing but the score integer score minus mean divided by the standard deviations one point of infections the point of infection is each plus or minus one sigma from above and below the means the curve changes from convex to concave at this point with the baselines i hope you understand the normal property curve and its properties now for finding the answer for the fourth question the fourth question of us what is the shapes we can think about the some of the asymmetric things also. Normally, this normal property curve is called as a symmetric curve, but if you, uh, the other than the normality, then we may use the term as here asymmetrical. That things we may discuss now. That is called skewness, other one is called kurtosis. Normally, the skewness uh, is called as a deviation from the normality. The skewness means asymmetrical natures. The degree of the departure from the symmetry is called skewness. The distributions in which mean, median and mode fall on different points or different places is also known as skewed distribution and the tendency of the distribution is known as skewness. 
The skewness of the distributions can be two types, which gives the birth of two types of curves. One is called positive skew, other one is called negative skews. So in this diagram, it focuses on the three things. One is called normal. The center is called the B diagram is normal. The left one is called negative skew. The right one is called positive skew. So I'm going to define what is the positive skew first. When the curve inclines more towards right, we ascertain the positive skewness. The distribution in which most of the frequency are concentrated in the class interval bearing lower values is known as a positive skew distributions and curve and the curve obtained from the distribution is called the positive skew curve. Positive skewed are skewed to the right because the scores tend or trail off to the right or the positive end of the curve. If the longer tail of the distribution is towards the higher values or upper sides, the skewness is positive. Now, next I move to the negative skew. When the curve inclines more to the left skewness becomes negative. The distribution in which most of the frequencies are scores are concentrated in the class intervals of higher values as negative distributions and the graph drawn on the basis of the distributions is called negative skewed of the curve. Negatively skewed or skewed to the left because the scores tend to trail off or left or the negative end of the curve. If the longer trail of the distribution is towards the lower values of the lower slides, the skewness is negative. So I hope you understand the meaning of skewness. Here I, I may emphasize, I may highlight the, the three formulas of the skewness uh, value, skewness, how we can find the skewness. If you know the value of mean and median as well as the standard deviation. If you know the value of skew 3 and q1 as well as the q2, how we can find the skewness. There is a three formula I discussed in this pages. Now I move to the last shapes. This is also normality. Uh, division from the normality that's other than the kurtosis. The kurtosis of the distributions referred to is curveness or peakness. The distributions may have the same mean and the same variance and may have equally skewed, but one of them may be more peaked than the other. Kurtosis refers to peakness or flatness of the normal curve. The normal curve is called mesokurtosis. A curve which is more peaked than the normal curve is called leptokurtosis. A curve in which flatter than the normal curve which is called platykurtosis. I hope you understand the, the three different kurtosis. Just once again, I may highlight leptokurtosis as well as the platy kurtosis. When the, cut, when the curve is more peak than the normal one is called as a leptokurtic curve. If maximum in the distribution are considered around the meaning, around the mean, then the number of frequency falling between the minus one sigma to plus one sigma is more than the frequency falling between the range in case of normal public curve. And the curve obtained for this distribution is called leptokurtic. The next one is called platykurtic. When the curve is more flattered, the distribution will call us in platykurtic in X or not concentrate around the mean. Therefore, the number of frequency falling between minus one sigma to plus one sigma is lower in comparisons within the normal probability curve, and the curve drawn from the distribution is known as a platykurtic curve. But if you want to write a interpretation for the psychometric purpose, we can use this kind of uh, conclusions or interpretations to lead the further analysis uh, based on the parametric or non-parametric, based on the skewness value or the kurtosis value, we have to be go further. Suppose um, a skewness and kurtosis value plus or minus one is considered very good for most psychomet psychometric uses. But some cases, some of the authors or some of the book writer also highlighted, um, they may use plus or minus two also. Normally, the right skew value is more than greater than the plus one, zero, plus one. The normal probability curve, the skewness value is minus one, two, plus one. If you go with left skewness, if the skewness value is less than the minus one, we may use the, we may come for the conclusion left skewness. The same way, the kurtosis value greater than one is called left of six. The measure kurtosis value is plus, uh, in between the minus one, two, plus one. The platy kurtosis value less than the minus one. This is the way we have to write the interpretations when you do some psychometric purposes. So thank you so much. I hope you understand what is the descriptive statistics and its rotations and its formulas too. Thank you. Bye. Jai Bharat.